Hello everyone. Today we shall discuss on the topic role of dentist in a smoking cessation. I have arranged the contents under these headings. Prevalence and need for cessation. Why is it so hard to quit? Role of dentist in a smoking cessation. The systematic approaches to smoking cessation, conclusion and final references. Prevalence and need for cessation. Tobacco use is the leading cause of preventable death in the world, killing half of all lifetime users and half of them die in the middle age, that is 35 to 69 years. Out of the 6 million people who die annually due to tobacco use, more than 5 million are attributed to direct tobacco use and 600,000 die as a result of passive smoking or secondhand smoking. And this death toll is predicted to rise up to 8 million by 2030. In context of Nepal, 37.1% of males above age 15 smoke, which is the 56th rank in the world, and 11.1% of females above 15 smoke, which is quite high compared to that of China. 1.8% and India 1.9% also it is now well established that tobacco is a risk factor for six of the eight leading causes of death in the world in all the top four that is ischemic heart disease cerebrovascular disease lower respiratory infections and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease may be caused by it Absorption of cigarette smoke from the lung is rapid and complete, producing with each inhalation a high concentration of arterial burst of nicotine that reaches the brain within 10 to 16 seconds, faster than that by intravenous injection. Nicotine has a distributional half-life of 15 to 20 minutes and terminal half-life uh, in blood for uh, 2 hours. Smokers therefore experience a pattern of repetitive and transient high blood nicotine concentrations from each cigarette with regularly hourly cigarettes needed to maintain raised concentrations and overnight blood levels dropping to close to those of the non-smokers. Nicotine has progressive effects on brain neurochemistry. It activates uh, Nicotine acetylcholine receptors, which are widely distributed in the brain, and it induces the release of dopamine in the nucleus accumens. This effect is same as that produced by other drugs of misuse, such as amphetamines and cocaine, and it is thought to be a critical feature of brain addiction mechanisms. So, by age 20, 80% of cigarette smokers regret that they have restarted, but as a result of their addiction to nicotine, many will continue to smoke for a substantial proportion of their adult lives. And out of the three approaches that can be implemented to control tobacco use, dentists are in such a position that they can use all the regulatory service approaches and educational approaches control the tobacco use and dentists can play a crucial role towards the smoking free community is they can become a role model by not smoking they can see harmful effects of tobacco in the mouth and counsel effectively they can build patients interest to quit by showing them the actual effects of tobacco in the oral cavity and they can be effective advocates for tobacco control in the community in if all primary health care providers routinely ask about tobacco use and advise tobacco users to stop, they have the potential to reach 80% of the tobacco users, out of which 40% actually make an attempt to quit and 2-3% quit successfully. Even that uh, though this 2-3% seems uh, very less, that 2-3% is a huge success if viewed in a way that 2-3% of 6 million deaths, that is around 1,20,000 to 1,80,000 deaths are prevented every year. Only if all the primary healthcare providers 
routinely asks about tobacco use and advises the users to stop. And systematic counseling guidelines to smoking cessation. We have the protocol 5 A's and 5 R's. This 5 A's are for every patient or the persons who are willing to quit. And for those who are not willing to quit, we have got 5 R protocol. And what are those 5 A's? Ask, advise, assess, assist, and arrange. Let's see one by one. Ask. We need to ask the patient about their use of tobacco at every visit because a person who used to smoke may have quit recently and we need to see the signs, objective signs for the stained teeth, halitosis, periodontal diseases, tooth mobility and discolored passes like leukoplakia and erythroplakia to, to validate the history given by the patient. Some people, because of their shyness, because because they fear what that we may exhaust them, they don't uh, they don't say openly that they have a habit of smoking. So uh, these findings should also be considered. And smokers are classified as smokers past smokers and non-smokers people are classified as um, like this if a person has smoked a total of 100 cigarettes in their lifetime and currently smoke their smokers if they have smoked more than 100 but are currently not smoking their past smokers and those who haven't smoked 100 cigarettes in their lifetime they are not smokers and after the asking, we need to advise, advise non-users to never stop and advise users to quit. And the advice for quitting should be clear, strong and personalized. And what does this mean? Personalizing the advice means, for example, we can give their own examples. If they have children, they need to quit because they have children, the smoking harms his family and how it affects his finance we can give real life examples that if a person smokes only for example 10 sticks per day and if a cigarette costs rupees 10 that amounts to rupees 3000 per month and we can say that if you earn rupees 30,000 per month your 10% of it, your net income goes to smoking. What all things you can buy if you save that money? Like that personalization of the advice should be done. And affirm and congratulate those who have quit and offer support if required. And tobacco smoke contains in the health wise basis also we can advise. Tobacco smoke contains more than 7,000 chemicals of which at least 250 are known to be harmful and at least 69 are known to cause cancer. The most potent carcinogens present in tobacco smoke are polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, benzene, formaldehyde, acetaldehyde, vinyl chloride, nickel, chromium, arsenic, lead, polonium and many other metal particles are also present. Moving forward to the next A that is assess. We need to assess the patient's readiness to quit, the level of dependence and the risk of relapse. How to assess the level of dependence? The level of dependence is said to be high if the person uses tobacco within 30 minutes of waking up or it use, he uses more than 25 times per day. And it is called moderate if he uses more than 30 minutes after waking up or less than 25 times per day and the level of dependence is low if he doesn't use within 30 minutes and uses less than 25 times per day that is low level of dependence and we need to after assessing we need to assess them to quit and we have got a mnemonic for that star sleep tail anticipate and remove set a quit date ideally within two weeks if we set a quit date too far away the motivation decreases and tell the family friends and co-workers about quitting and ask for support anticipate challenges to the upcoming quit attempt 
the challenges there might be there might be withdrawal symptoms there might be prayer pressure everything should be anticipated before and the mentally prepared the person should be mentally prepared regarding those things and remove all the tobacco products from the patient's environment and make the home smoke free uh, moreover use of pharmacotherapy is also another option to help with uh, tobacco smoking cessation there are nicotine replacement therapies which uh, increase the nicotine gum nicotine patches nicotine inhaler nasal spray lozenges are available but these are contraindicated in pregnancy and lactation cardiovascular disease peripheral vascular disease and all these uh, listed disorders here in diabetes gastric ulcers and nicotine replacement therapies can help quitting for short term but nicotine addiction can be problematic and can cause relapse so it is better if you can quit without using nicotine nicotine withdrawal symptoms like craving depressed mood insomnia irritability anxiety restlessness etc may also occur use of pharmacotherapy antidepressant um, can act as anti craving agents and first line drugs that are used are bupropion sustained release, salazeline, and second-line clonidine nortriptyline. The FDA has approved two smoking suggestion products that do not contain nicotine. These are varinicline tartarate that comes in brand name Chantix and bupropion hydrochloride that comes in the brand name Zyvan. These are not so easily available in India and Nepal. So, in India and Nepal, from the manufacturer Sipla, We've got Nicotex nicotine chewing gum that comes in 4 mz gums and it is recommended that these gums should be used only up to 12 weeks and for the first 4 weeks the patient takes for the first 2 weeks the patient takes every for every 2 to 4 hours one chewing gum and for the next 4 weeks every four to six hours that means the frequency is decreased and in the last six weeks every six to eight hours one stick should be used now arrange for periodic follow-ups and continued evaluation of smoking status whether there was any relapse there is a high chance of relapse if their periodic follow-ups are not uh, arranged so that's also a role of a dentist this all five a modality was for those patients who are ready to quit but there are some patients who are not ready to quit if even if you will behave then they're not ready to quit like mark twain if he cannot smoke he cannot he will not go in heaven some people are so obstinate about smoking for those patients we need to follow this 5R protocol, relevance, risk, rewards, roadblocks and reputation and relevance of quitting. We need to personalize, just like that advice was personalized here. If you do not quit, your health condition will deteriorate. If you do not quit, this leukoplakia might turn into cancer in the near future. If you do not quit, your COPD will exacerbate and you will be in trouble and all the financial reasons other other reasons can be given risks of continuing if you continue smoking these are the various risks this can be acute risk long-term risk and environmental risk delayed healing of oral wounds periodontal disease develop cholesterol increases and pregnancy is um, hampered and there will be importance in male also due to smoking and in long term cancer heart attack and stroke lung disease financial loss this can be seen so that we can convince the person to quit smoking and these are the stains due to tobacco use we can use audio visual ads and motivate them to quit smoking these are the periodontal disease see there is gum recession there is severe plaque and calculus deposit anterior staining is also present 
and this is the leukoplakia and the um, lower border of the tongue and this is the most dreaded squamous cell carcinoma cancer tongue cancer on the lateral border and this is the surgery done after a squamous cell carcinoma how disastrous is the situation we need to we need to make them aware of the risk of smoking and reverse of quitting whenever if somebody quits he gets reward immediately he will feel better his food tastes better money is saved and in long term benefits that the, he will set a good example for children he will live a longer and healthier life and that should be that should be done in a very systematic manner so that we can persuade people to quit and roadblocks to quitting we need to counsel him what are your fears what what is stopping you from quitting some people may have fear of physical symptoms fear of failure support in some may be enjoying tobacco use and some may fear tobacco weight gain and they may feel that i am depressed if i don't use tobacco so the, there these things need to be addressed and repeat once we persuade somebody once the person gets persuaded it is highly likely that he will fail in quitting the first attempt and he may turn back into smoking that's the easy way so we need to repeat the motivational messages and continue support we need to tell that quitting may take several attempts before becoming successful those were the five r's to quit smoking for those patients who are not willing to quit now for the uh, second hand smoking also needs to be reduced and for that for that we need, we use the same five is ask advice assess, assistant range that's similar you can go through these ones and in conclusion there is um, smoking is a major health problem which causes eight of the leading six of the eight leading causes of death in the world and all this for ischemic heart disease cerebral vascular disease lower respiratory infection and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease these are caused due to tobacco use and for systematic counseling we have five e's and five r's to help patients quit tobacco these five e's are for those who are willing to quit and five r for those who are not willing to quit and we need to ask each and every patient in the opd about smoking use habit because that is going to make a difference even if 2 to 3% of the people whom you counsel quit tobacco that will affect in a large scale so there's only one condition in the world where quitting makes a person a winner and that's quitting tobacco the tobacco treating sauce all in 31st may you celebrate is world no tobacco day is a health professional must on the on the first thing is that we should be a role model that we should never smoke if if you're watching this video and if you do have a habit of smoking please please make an effort towards quitting thank you and these are my references i will provide a link of this uh, a uh, toolkit for delivering the 5 A's and 5 R in the description below thank you have a nice day give a thumbs up if you like this video